All right, guys, this is going to be the conclusion of my Easter Sunday reading. I have to get ready myself, get ready to glamorize myself. I don't have very much, but I'm going to dress nice. You know, it's a special Sunday. Okay, so let's see here. There's so many things I could read to you right now. But you know I'm all about the details. So there's something over here by Mark 14. We're going to wind up in, we're going to end up getting rid of uh, this chapter and going on to Luke uh, Monday. So why did Judas betray Jesus? Let's read this. It says the Bible doesn't give us a clear answer about the motive Judas had for betraying Jesus. Looking at the circumstances of his life as a disciple and the events of the last weeks of Jesus' life, we can formulate a, reason, a reasonable speculation of why it happened. Judas Iscariot must understood what Jesus intended to do with the supernatural power that he displayed and the following of people he had attracted. Judas wasn't alone. Most of the disciples thought Jesus was going to break out of his religious mode and make some political moves that would put him and his disciples in charge of the nation of Israel. But as Jesus and his disciples moved toward Jerusalem and the Passover celebration, Jesus was growing and Judas was growing impatient, waiting for Jesus to make a move. So when Jesus praised the woman who poured that, that expensive perfume over him, Judas realized Jesus was not concerned with the finances necessary to initiate a political move. So Judas talked to the enemy and hatched a plan that would force Jesus' hand. And when Jesus allowed himself to be taken without a fight, Judas had second thoughts and tried to return the money he had been paid, but his remorse was so great that he hanged himself. Amen. Okay, so now there was a plot to kill Jesus. And uh, Judas was the one who initiated all of that. So that's what I read to you just then. Now Jesus institutes the Lord's Supper. As they did eat, Jesus took bread and he blessed and break. He had the Lord's Supper with the disciples. He blessed and break the bread and he gave it to them. And he said, take eat for this is my body. And he took the cup and when he had given thanks... He gave it to them, and they all drank of it out of the one cup, passed a cup of wine around. And he said unto them, This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many. Verily I say unto you, I will drink no more of the fruit of the vine until that day that I drink it new in the kingdom of God. And when they had sang a hymn, they went out into the Mount of Olives, and Jesus said unto them, All ye shall be offended because of me this night. For it is written, I will smite the shepherd, and the sheep shall be scattered. But after that I am risen, I will go before you into Galilee. But Peter said unto him, Although all shall be offended, yet will not I. Now Peter is the one that the Lord said, Oh, Peter, you will deny me twice, three times before I am dead, I am gone. And so he did deny him three times. I'm going to get all the way to that. Now we're over here when he sent, Jesus was sent before Pilate. Uh, this is in Mark 15. Straightway in the morning, the chief priest held a consolation, a consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council bound, and bound Jesus and carried him away, delivered him to Pilate. So they took him to Pilate, you know, questioning him. He didn't say a word. So he was questioned. He was he was scourged. He was, you know, yelled at and all that. He didn't say anything. You know, he just let them go on and do whatever they wanted to do. So what happened here, uh, Mark 15 and 16, Jesus crowned with thorns and crucified. And the soldiers led him away into the hall called Praetorium. And they called together the whole band. So this person here who had been followed, the Lord had been followed and cherished by many. He was performing miracles. They decided to dress him up and crucify him, right? Hang him on a cross. 
for all the things that he was doing that he was not told he should do. So, Jesus was hung on the cross. He gave up the ghost. He died right there. His blood was shed on the cross for many to see. So when we get over here, the atonement, this is Mark 15 and 42. They prepared him to be buried, right? And when they prepared him to be buried, uh, the high priest, they said, we're going to send two guards over to the grave. Once he is buried inside the sculpture, we want to make sure that no one steals the body because, you know, he was performing all the miracles and they said, we may go there and find the body is missing in the morning. So, um, what happened was he was buried and they sent the men over there to watch the grave. Then we get over here. We're all the way in the last part of Mark. Hold on here. Then we're going to start Luke on Monday. Let me tell you what happened. We're going to go to Mark 16, the last chapter. I don't want to be very long on this one because I have something to do. This is Mark 16. Here we go. After he was buried... Mark 16, it says, and when the Sabbath was passed, the Sunday was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and uh, Salome, had bought sweet spices, and they might come and anoint him. They had bought some oils. They wanted to anoint his head after he died. And very, and very early in the morning, the first day of the week, they came unto the grave. At the rising of the sun, they came there when the sun came up. And they said among themselves, this was early on a Sunday morning, who shall roll us away the stone from the door of the sculpture? How can we get that? How can we get the grave open? Because what they wanted to do was anoint his head with oil. He had already been killed. And when they looked, they saw that the stone was rolled away, for it was very great. So the grave was covered with a stone where he was laying. But the stone was already moved away. And they looked, you know, they said the stone is already moved away from the grave. It's already open. You know, and they're like, who could have done that? You know, because it's heavy. And so after they looked upon and saw that it was already an open grave, Entering into, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, clothed in a long white garment, and they were affrighted. And he said unto them, Be not affrighted. Ye seek Jesus of Nazareth, which was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. Behold the place where they laid him. He said, Look at where they laid him. He's not here. He's not in the grave. But go your way and tell his disciples and Peter that he goeth before you into Galilee. There shall ye see him as he said unto you. You will see him. He is risen and he is in Galilee. And they went out quickly and fled from the, from the gravesite. For they trembled and were amazed. Neither said they anything to any man, for they were afraid. Now when Jesus was risen early the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had cast seven devils. And she went and told them that had been with him as they mourned and wept. And they, when they had heard that he was alive and had been seen of her, believed not. They didn't believe her. After that, he appeared in another form unto two of them as they walked unto two of the disciples and went into the country. And they went and told it unto the residue and to the other people, neither did they believe them. Afterward, he appeared unto eleven as they sat at meat, eleven people, and upbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of heart, because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. 
And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe in my name shall they cast out devils, they shall speak with new tongue, they shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. So then after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. And they went forth and preached everywhere the Lord working with them. And confirming the word with signs and wonders. Amen. And that's the end of Mark. So we'll start on Luke on Monday. Bye-bye.